the Ministry of Industrialization, Trade and Enterprise Development and the Special Economic Zones Authority in Kenya recently launched a web portal where current and potential investors will access key information such as investment opportunities and incentives, investor roadmaps and facilities, as well as administrative and tax incentives. Speaking during the launch of the web portal, the Honorable Betty Mina, who is Cabinet Secretary in the Ministry of Industrialization, Trade and Enterprise Development, uh, said that the Special Economic Zones are a key pillar for Kenya's industrialization agenda, value addition and platform to leverage and catalyze private sector investment. Uh, she also added that the government will work closely with the economic zones uh, to support the private sector, particularly, she said, companies in the manufacturing sector. Joining us to discuss further is uh, Taiwo Adams, who is the head of broker services at Commercial Partners, and he joins me now to discuss further. Taiwo, you're very welcome. Thanks for Thank joining us. Thank you for us. having me. So, um, in, in your view, uh, how effective is a web portal in terms of Kenya's uh, agenda here for their special economic zones? I mean, uh, I think it's very effective. Uh, when you look at uh, the reason why they would have probably set it up. If you look at um, Kenya's um, FDIs uh, from 2017, uh, we saw about an increase of about 86%. And we saw in 2018 as well, we saw about an increase of 28%. But 2019, we saw a sharp decline of about, um, you know, negative 18%. Uh, we didn't see some, I didn't see the, the figures for 2020, but I mean, your guess is good as mine. Mm. With the whole COVID-19, uh, I'm sure it was also down as well. So I'm sure with this portal, it will help to bring about, uh, you know, current investors and also potential investors to be able to communicate with the, uh, with the uh, authorities as well. And, you know, key information, to be able to give them key information about investment uh, opportunities in Kenya, uh, you know, investment arising in Kenya and how they can further you know, improve uh, their services to the private sector as well. So I think it's a definitely good uh, uh, initiative for, for the government as well. First and off. could drive, uh, uh, you know, investment into the country. Fantastic. Um, Kenya has what, 10 special economic zones. Is it too few or too many? I mean, I can't say it's too few, obviously. Yeah. And then obviously it can't be too many. I mean, if you just cite a case of like China, where that's where this is, like, it's, it's a very big, uh, thing in China where this started around uh, 1978. Already have over like 2,500 industrial zones, I mean, uh, economic zones. Wow. And you see, uh, you know, ranging from industrial zones to, uh, you know, free trade zones as well as uh, export zones. And this has accounted for about 20% of China's GDP, also about 46% um, of the FDIs as well and 60% of the uh, of the exports as well. So uh, you can also look at how it has also created about 30 million jobs. So I don't think anyone that any country that is looking to grow, uh, you know, economic for economic growth uh, can see this and say that it's too few. I think they would probably be looking for how they want to actually expand, mm. uh, you know, th those uh, and, and grow those uh, areas as well. Fantastic. So you can never get enough of you your never special get economic zones. Yeah, Kenya's uh, cabinet uh, uh, secretary um, added that they'll be working closely with the special economic zones and they want to focus particularly on, on manufacturing. Well, well, why is that? Of course, I mean, manufacturing uh, sector is a key sector for economic growth for any country. Mm. I mean, you, you just talked about how their, their focus is, is on industrialization. And I just mentioned the, the, the advantages that uh, China has had, uh, you know, by, you know, taking this uh, initiative and what they have done. So if you, if you really look at it, you look at the, the potential for a manufacturing sector, how it can create jobs, uh, you know, is, is enormous. So you, you cannot underestimate uh, the, the impact that the manufacturing sector could have. I mean, a country that uh, is able to meet the local demand and also, you know, export as well, could drive investments into the country as well, you know, promote jobs and ultimately increase your, your, your external reserves as well and make, uh, you know, give, uh, provide for FX liquidity uh, for your country, put less pressure on, on, your, on, your, uh, on your reserves and ultimately strengthen your, uh, your currency as well. So I think she's definitely right uh, about that. Focus on manufacturing. Yeah. All right, I want to move from that to Kenya and uh, Pakistan resolving their trade dispute. This is, I get, this is good news all around for both parties, yeah? Of course. Yes, yeah, definitely good news. I mean, if you look at uh, both uh, countries, uh, they definitely have shared a good relationship over time. Uh, Pakistan is one of the biggest trading partners with uh, uh, Kenya. I think they're number three. Uh, if you look at how their trade uh, uh, between the goods countries have grown as well, we're looking at $283 million from um, uh, 
uh, as at 20, uh, 2008, and now has grown to $700 million uh, as at 2020. So you can underestimate that relationship. And I think if you also look at, uh, you know, obviously favors Kenya more, if you look at how, uh, you know, in terms of the imports from Pakistan, uh, how it's, that's about roughly about 199 million right. compared to the export of, uh, to, to Pakistan about 500, 500 million. Yeah. So the, the trade surplus is definitely uh, significant, but I still think it favors both of them. Uh, if you look at um, you know, Kenya, the, the agricultural sector makes up about 70% of their workforce. So uh, you, you definitely look at how this would definitely help the local, I, I mean, majority of what they produce is tea and coffee and the like. So those local producers who produce uh, tea would definitely benefit from this. And also the, the uh, tea importers from Pakistan will also benefit from this. So I think it's a welcome idea for both of them. And I think it works for, for both of them as well. That is, again, that's what you cited. The $199, $199 million, million, uh, yeah. imports from Pakistan, but yet they export $500 million export to, to, uh, to Pakistan. That's Kenya. Um, Inflation uh, in, in, in Kenya, the, the rise that we saw uh, August, I think we got a minute to go. Can, can you touch on, I guess, triggers? Yeah, I mean, we, we saw a rise about, uh, you know, it rose to about 6.57% uh, from 6.55% uh, month on month. Um, I mean, this was attributed to high uh, food and commodity prices, transportation costs as well, and also like housing, electricity, and water uh, costs as well. But I mean, this is, it's important to note that, you know, the, the monetary authorities have also set, uh, you know, an inflation target, which is in the band of 2.5% to 7.5%. So I think they're still very well within their bound, and there's no real cause for alarm yet. So I think they're still relatively fine in that space. Great stuff. How, sticking with inflation, because um, I know you, I think you cover fixed income as well. How, um, how, do, how do you play inflation numbers on the I mean, fixed income side? Do you definitely have to look at inflation when you're uh, playing with the fixed income space as well. I mean, if you look at, uh, you want to, if you're investing in fixed income and you, you're looking at where, you want to consider where inflation is, that tells you whether you're at a negative uh, uh, rate of return or at a positive uh, return. In the case of Kenya, you look at uh, their, their long end, um, uh, bonds trading at around 13.5% to about 14%. And you look at your inflation at about uh, 6%. 6 so yeah, it, it would definitely drive investment yeah. to come into that space as well. Compared to Nigeria, yeah, where I was about our, to inflation, ask. our inflation is about 7.37%. Uh, yeah. And you know, our, our bonds are trading around 12.5%. 12, 12 so we're literally investing at a negative uh, uh, return. So. Mm. Does that does that push investors to have to look at so obviously in you, you, case it, when you it, have that it's inflation? it's it definitely could you you won't get the kind of investment that you should be getting obviously when you look at that because investors obviously want uh, you know return you know better return for their money as well so you definitely it will definitely bode well for a country to have uh, you know the inflation to not be so far away from where uh, the fixed income rates are. Ty Adams, head of brokerage services at Commercial Partners. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for us. having Talk me. Appreciate you. Appreciate you coming in.